I'm Joanne Banco from Let's Go Sew. I'm really excited today to show you a warm weather capsule wardrobe with knit separates that you can mix and match for traveling, uh, short little cruise maybe, a little trip to a resort, a uh, weekend away. These are just enough pieces. You gather a few more together and you've got a great little capsule wardrobe to wear out of comfortable knits. So let me um, show you first the actual garments and I'm gonna teach you some really special techniques today. So here we have two tops and two bottoms. That's a great way to start. Of course, you can add more. If you're gonna add more, add more tops rather than bottoms, because bottoms we can always wear you know, another time and, and add with tops. Maybe a, a white tank top or you know, a pink tank top, something that'll go with it, or something multicolored would be a good add-on, whether you make it or you purchase it ready-made. But these um, pieces are all made from a dress weight knit. So you want a dress weight knit when you're gonna do, I'm not doing a dress, but when you're gonna do a skirt or a top or full pants, because that's gonna give you enough drape and enough flow to have a nice garment that's not too stiff. So simple uh, elastic waists, but the neckline treatment and the hem treatment are the techniques that I'm gonna show you today. I'm gonna come back over the table and just talk for another minute or two here about some of the add-ons. You know, for me, I wanna have, for warm weather destination, a pair of shorts, and white jeans are great to have both of those would look good mixing and matching with those tops. And then another great thing to add is a colorful scarf. The nice thing about a large scarf is it can also double as a shawl. So if you're transitioning from day to evening and you wanna dress it up a little bit, that's the perfect way to do it. Let's talk about the pattern. I just simply chose a pattern for wide leg pants, uh, again, for a dress weight knit and uh, elastic waist. So very simple to sew, very quick. That's nice to get this, get this done and get it, get it rolling. And what I like to do is pick a pattern that is a style that I love. Uh, often I'll try that on in ready to wear first. And then once I've perfected the pattern, tried it out once, maybe adjusted the length or tweaked it a little bit, I'm gonna trace it onto pattern tracing cloth and I'm gonna reuse that pattern again. I'm gonna get a lot of mileage out of it that way. All right, let me talk a little bit about some of the pieces and parts here. We're gonna start with a neckline. Any, again, it's just gotta be a knit top that's got a gentle curve to it. And I'm gonna show you how to do that uh, technique with a special uh, stay tape here. And then the uh, hem is also gonna use a different technique. You may want to alter your pattern a little bit. That's, you know, I like to test again. Um, when I do a knit pattern for a new top, I will usually um, cut it out. And if you can see, I've kind of got a partial here. You can see this piece when I'm gonna show you in a minute. Lay that down. Just the armholes, the shoulders, and the neckline. And I will sew that together and then try it on. Because I might wanna scoop that neck a little bit more, I might wanna raise it a little bit. Usually most of your fitting issues are in the neck and the shoulders. You can add a little bit of extra seam allowance on the side so that you've got some give there to play with. But that's a good way to start. And then it's also a good way to practice the technique that you're doing, and I'll be showing you in, in just a minute. Let's um, talk about the ruler. That would be ideal then for changing that curve and just you know making it a little uh, less scooped or maybe a little bit more scooped. So that'll work for you for that. What about elastic? Well, elastic is a very important part of an elastic garment, obviously. And I really prefer elastic that is non-roll. So this doesn't crush and I can easily um, insert this into the into the waist and not have to top stitch through it, but not be concerned with that rolling over and bending as I'm wearing it. All right, I'm gonna move over to the machine and I'm gonna take a few pieces and parts with me here. Okay, so I'm threaded right now with just regular standard polyester thread. And I'm just gonna re-sew this shoulder seam so that you can see um, a little technique here. With really fine knits, I'm gonna use um, either a regular straight stitch, usually for the shoulder, I'm gonna use a regular straight stitch, but I'm gonna use um, a regular straight stitch length. And what happens sometimes is it's a little tricky to start that at the very beginning. So I've got a little piece of water soluble stabilizer and I've just snipped that, I've extended it off the end and I'm gonna use that to 
give me a little bit of something for the machine to bite into. That way I can do a reverse stitch if I need to. When I get to the end, that's not a problem. I can tie that off and then cut and I'm, and I'm good to go. So a regular straight stitch works just fine. What about in the seams where you need a little bit more stretch? Well, in that case, I'm going to switch to my favorite stretchy stitch, which is the lightning stitch right there. I'm going to lengthen that just a little bit. And again, I'm going to use that same little technique. So a lightning stitch is very much like a zigzag. It's just a, a, a more straight version of it. If you don't have a lightning stitch, then go ahead and select a zigzag and just lengthen it a little bit and make it a little more narrow. And that way you'll have a good stretchy stitch too. So all of those stitches will stretch. What about stretchy thread? That's another option. I can actually change this and re-thread the machine. Put that in, in the top. You can use it in the top and in the bobbin if you want to. But this thread actually has built-in stretch to it. So with that, again, I can use just a standard, ordinary, straight stitch, and it's actually my thread that is going to stretch with my seam. Get that threaded up there. Okay. And let me just show you a real quick seam with that. We'll just go back in the same spot. And I just want to select the regular straight stitch this time. And even though that's just a straight stitch, it gives me the option of stretching that. All right, now I want to show you that neckline technique. So what I've done is I've started with stay tape that is actually a knit itself, and it's a little bit stretchy. I walk that around the neckline so that I can see how much I need. And once I've done that, then I select a triple zigzag, and I stitch that all around the neckline very, very close to the edge. I take my scissors then, and I like these curve tip ones because they work really good for me to get up close to that excess. So once my blade is underneath there, you can see. So see, I'm just trimming that excess away. And I've got a lot of that done here on the front already. So then I'm going to simply turn that under. I'm going to press it 3 eighths of an inch. I'm going to switch to a blind hem foot, an adjustable blind hem foot because that's going to give me the option to, and I'm going to re-thread with my other thread here really quick. That's going to give me the option to uh, guide that along the edge very, very evenly and very easily so that my neckline finish is going to be consistent all the way around. And of course, I'm doing this with contrasting thread on a little sample so that you can see exactly what I'm doing. Now, what stitch would you select? You could select a straight stitch, but I'm going to go here to this next menu, and I'm going to select what's called a double patchwork overlock stitch. And I've tested this. I know this works. And I'm going to run that right along that neckline. So again, a straight stitch would work. A zigzag would work. Um, you know, experiment a little bit with the look that you like. I'll do just a little bit of that. Okay, and then there's a nice close look of that finished stitch. So again, if you prefer straight stitch, you can do that, but it catches on both sides, just finishes off that really nice and neat, and yet I still have just a slight stretch to that neck, but it's stabilized with that stay tape. All right, what about the hem? Let's get some of these pieces and parts out of the way. Let's get our regular foot back on. And let me tell you how I did that hem. Same stitch, okay? Here's my finished piece. It's the exact same stitch. I do usually use a little bit of a narrower width on the hem because it just, it just makes it a little bit less noticeable. On the neck, I like it a little wider because then it kind of gives a, a decorative accent. Now, what did I have to do to prepare this? Well, I started with a very lightweight bias 
fusible interfacing. Very soft, very lightweight. I don't need the stay effect. All I need is a little bit of extra body. So I have fused that already to my hemline, and then it's a simple matter of turning that up, and I'm ready to sew that hem. Again, I'm gonna use that same stitch, but this time I'm gonna make it just a little narrower and maybe a tad longer. Always test, it's always best to test. And I would have sewn my garment all together, I'd sew the side seams, I would be doing my hem last. See that goes through very smooth, I'm using the regular standard presser foot for this. And as soon as I get to the end here, I'm gonna do the fun part, which is stretch it. So you can see that it really gives you the um, stretch factor that you need when you're, a lot of times when you're putting your clothes on or taking them off is when you really need that, okay? So take a look at that. See how nice and neat and even that is? It's stretchy, it's stabilized, and you've got a great wardrobe set that'll take you near or far, It'll be something you'll wear a lot. Add a few pieces for a beautiful capsule wardrobe. Visit the website. We'll have complete instructions for you.